Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Hey, and welcome to the Soap Series. This is Doug with my co-host Pam. Pam, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Right when I push the Days of Our Lives uh, themed music, we have our guest that joined us. Welcome, James Scott, to our program. Hello. Hi, James. (laughs) I made it exactly on time. Oh, I love I'm glad to be here. <laughs> oh, thank you for coming. Lauren, Lauren said that since she was your your on screen stepmommy dearest, that she would make sure that you called on time. Uh, yes, yes. We were working together just a few minutes ago, so I was reminded uh, several times today not to be late, and she reinforced how fantastic the show was and how wonderful all of you were, so I'm very excited. Oh, thank oh, well, you so much. Well, well, thank you so much. We're very honored to have this opportunity with you. Uh, the fans are really what drives our show. We we always ask the, the uh, fans who they want, and uh, we've been looking for a way to get a hold of you, and we had Lauren on a few weeks ago, and she was a wonderful guest, and she said, well, I will talk to, to James and see if he can come on the show. And I said, oh, thank you so much. The fans would love it. You have a lot of people listening in tonight, so your your fans are really excited. Good. Well, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. Uh, uh, I, so, I think I mentioned this to you earlier. I have put until about 6:45, not quite the whole hour, but I um, unfortunately I have it. I have it, uh, uh, a work dinner that's going to be just before seven, so. Uh, just, oh, that's okay. Uh, we understand. Yeah. No problem. No problem. So, how, how was how was your day of filming today? Uh, my day of filming was wonderful. I was working with Lauren Coslow. Uh, somebody who I adore and do not uh, work nearly enough with, in my opinion. I wish, 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 wish they wrote more scenes. For EJ and Kate, I think we have a lot of chemistry. I think we have a lot of fun. I know Lauren is uh, you know, one of my favorite actors to work with. So today was wonderful for that very reason. Oh. Well, I know I wouldn't mind seeing it because I love Lauren as well, and I think you two do have great chemistry together. Me too. It's a little bit complicated because she's married to my father, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we, have, we, have, we, have, we have chemistry in other ways as well. Which is right, right. <laughs> well, actually, now that we found out that he's not your father, you know, it might not be so rough. <laughs> That is very true. That is very true. I wasn't quite sure where you were in terms of the air show. So maybe you could refresh me as to what exactly is airing, um, just to recap me as to where you are and also have to make sure that I don't give any information away. Right. Yeah, well, uh, this was the big week for uh, Will came out to his to uh, Sammy and to Lucas, and we just had the scenes on Wednesday where – you all, your character already knew that Will was was gay, and uh, you're dealing with uh, with with Sammy on her selfish reaction to blaming herself for her son being gay. So that's what happened uh, as of uh, Wednesday. I see. Uh, and uh, uh, what is the general response to those two? They're pretty big pieces of information in terms of the direction of the show for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what is the response to those? You know, I'm I'm curious. Uh, well, first off, you, you, uh, you know, Sammy is always going to be Sammy. She always makes everything about herself. So, but uh, the fans are loving Chandler and 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 his his interpretation of this storyline, which is a great storyline. I think it's like, very exciting uh, to see Days of Our Lives tackle this topic. Uh, it's it's not been done real well on daytime uh, over the course of history and now we got Bull and the Beautiful who just started a lesbian storyline this week as well. So I mean it's it's a good topic for for people to to watch and I think Chandler has done a great job by maybe helping other people who are dealing with the same topic in their own lives. And um it's been really great. And then your chemistry with Chandler uh as well is is wonderful. So many people love the the interaction between E J and Will as well. You know, I have to say, I'm a huge fan uh, of working with Chad Massey. He's one of the most talented young actors I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Um, and uh, the way that they've written the relationship between EJ and Will, I've really enjoyed. It's a sort of dysfunctional mentor mentee father son relationship. I think that, uh, in a strange way, EJ is the sort of missing father figure for William who he seems to uh, uh, identify with and respect in some ways. And uh, then you have um, uh, EJ, who sees himself in this past 
you know, to a certain degree. And I think he also uh, has a lot of empathy for what William's going through and um, and likes him, just really likes this kid. I like I like him a lot. I'm glad that you have kind things to say about him because it's been one of my favorite storylines over the last few months. Yes. And, uh, Pam, what, what are your thoughts about the storyline and, 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 and such? Well, I love it. I I love that you blackmail each other, you and <laughs> and Chandler, <laughs> and you're you're sort of like a father figure to him, but also like a big brother since you know he already has a dad. And uh, you're standing by Sammy. I I just love the whole storyline. I think it's great for the public to see. I think it's something phenomenal for days to do. Well, thank you, thank you. I have to say, I think the storyline about him struggling and coming to terms with his sexuality has been one of the uh, best written storylines that we've had on the show in a long time. And, and he is just phenomenal. I mean, he's just an incredible actor. I, I, you know, I don't know that he will win the Emmy this year, but I don't think there's anyone more deserving. Yes, I yeah. totally agree. If I was on that yeah. committee, I would be right up there with them because he's he's really. Uh, I'm actually a new new old fan of the show. I used to watch the show in the 90s, and then I recently, when I saw about the storyline coming on, I wanted to see how Days was going to tackle it. And uh, in my opinion, you and Chandler carry the show. You guys make the show, and if you guys weren't on it, it wouldn't be nearly as entertaining because you guys have, you bring a different dynamic uh, you, with, you know, with, with uh, EJ and Sammy and EJ and Nicole, and then Chandler, or, you know, uh, with, with Will dealing with his sexuality. Those, those powerful performances are just phenomenal and I'm so glad I'm able to watch now uh, and you're a part of the show I'm glad you're you know we were sad when you left all my children but we were happy to see you be resurrected over in, in Salem as um, as a Demira well I'm very happy to be at the show I, I enjoy it it's a tremendous amount great pleasure so, so in your opinion who do you think EJ's real love is? is it, do you think it's Sammy or do you think it's uh, Nicole or is it someone that that EJ hasn't probably even met yet? Um, well, that's a very difficult question. You know, I think that um, <laughs> um, in, in life, uh, you know, they say that you uh, you relive three relationships in life. You relive your relationship with your mother, you relive your relationship with your father, and you relive their relationship. Mm-hmm. And I think that in a way, EJ relives his relationship with his father through Nicole, who loved him absolutely, and she kept pushing her away. Mm-hmm. So, he had a tough time dealing with it in the same way that he has a sort of relationship with his father. And then, uh, you know, his relationship with his mother is very absent. His relationship with Sammy is very absent. And I feel like, you know, I think that EJ has this big question mark that hangs over Sammy's head. You know, is she, you know, is is she really this girl he's destined to be with? Is she really this girl that he's in love with? Is there really this sort of uh, future written in the stars for them? And there's never really been the opportunity to find out. And when Mm -hmm. they work, they work wonderfully. And when they fight, they fight with the same sort of passion. And I think yeah. that it's a, a wonderfully dysfunctional relationship that they don't know how to separate from one another because they always feel they have to be attached, whether it be as friends or enemies. Um, and in a way, I think sometimes they hurt one another because they're unable to really communicate how much they love one another. Mm-hmm. But it's the cold. So, um, I feel that in the moments when he tries to be with Nicole, you know, it's somewhat conspired because the initial situation, they got married because she was pregnant. But, you know, I feel like he was very sincere when he was saying that he really loved her once out of family with her. Although I just somewhat feel like that's wrong for kiss of death. You know, I think if you marry somebody because they have your baby and you want to have a family, uh, that's not a very good reason to get married. And that's been sort of proven. So I think that EJ is... You know, I think he's, there's, a, there's a, a good friend of mine who was once dating uh, three guys at the same time. And I said, how's it going with these guys? And she said, oh, I'm so in love. And I said, well, who are you in love with? And she said, oh, I love the one I'm with. <laughs> and uh, I, I sort of think that he dates a little bit like that. He loves the one he's with. Yeah. <laughs> 
that that's a good way to interpret that role. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, now, what was it like playing on All My Children with Thorsten K? I think he's another great actor. Thorsten K is, a, is an extremely talented actor. He's extremely talented. You know, he, I, I hear he's doing very well from himself. He has a role on this new uh, Smash television series, which I have not seen, but I, I gather it's very good. Um, yes, sir. And he's a good actor. He's very... Uh, there's a lot of, I think, depth to the way that he carries himself. And his performances tend to be very subtle and nuanced and, his, uh, and very patient as well. He picks his moments very carefully. He's a good, smart actor. Yeah, I certainly, uh, you know, I, I learned quite a bit from Boyfriend McSorsten. Now, I have I have some questions. I actually have a lot of questions from Twitter fans. And one of them is from Rachel Averin. And she wants to know if you have any interest in making films. She said Hollywood needs a handsome, up-and-coming leading man your age. Well, uh, that's very kind of her. It's a very generous compliment to give me. Uh, thank you, first of all. Um, you know, um, <clears throat> every time I answer this question, I sort of am damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. Everybody would like me to say yes. And as soon as I say yes, everybody says, well, you're not even sure, are you? <laughs> um, yeah. and the is, you know, you have to pick one or the other. Nobody's going to sign me for a movie if I'm under a long-term contract with soap operas by now. So, I'm all, I mean, I, would I like to do it? Yes. My favorite thing about working is paying my mortgage. While I'm doing that, I'm quite happy. But, uh, sure. you know, we shall see what happens. I have a contract for another, uh, I don't know, year and a half, something like that. So, not Well, we're happy to hear that. that. Yeah, no, I'm happy. It's, I mean, I love my job. I'm very happy working where I work. Um, it can be a little kooky some days, but that's, uh, that's you know, that's all part and parcel of being on a daytime show. Now, what's the, what's the difference between working on an American soap and working on a British soap like EastEnders? They're very different. Uh, uh, you know, they really, soap operas are very representative of the culture in which they are developed. So I would say America is a very aspirational country. It's a country that's sort of built on this premise of achievements and dream, uh, this ability to be able to, for everybody to be able to rise up through the system, attain success financially, politically, socially, however it may be. Uh, it's a much more capital driven economy that in England there's much more, I think, emphasis placed on the accumulation of money in this country. Um, and those values uh, you see in the show itself. You know, you have, this show is made up, and many of the sort of offers are, of, of communities who have a lot of money, um, where the success is sort of, you know, a barometer of that success is their wealth, and they have... They run companies and they're powerful and they have jets and they have all these other things and uh, um, it's sort of escapism. The audience watches these shows because that's not reality for the people of this country and they watch these shows to escape reality um, and the storylines themselves are all the same. You know, um, American storylines move much more quickly. I think that they uh, they're very differently produced. Uh, their audience is, of course, massively smaller. You have a show, a uh, soap opera in America, maybe gets four, five, six million viewers a day uh, for an hour show. A population of 300 million people in this country, so maybe you get one and a half percent, two percent of the population watching the show. England is a country of uh, 60 million people. That one rated soap opera out there gets between 10 and 20 million viewers. That's between one in six and one in three in the country. So, right. Yeah, I know it's it's a bigger a bigger audience in in England. I have a few friends out there, and I know they tell me they watch them all the time. It's very different. Um, now, you know, they also have so to look at the comparison between the two. England, like America, is a predominantly working class country to a significant extent, but they don't have the same sort of aspirational culture that you have here. And consequently, their shows, uh, all of them, are based around 
working class, everyday communities, blue collar communities. These are people who are struggling to get by day to day, who are having to deal with the realities of life, as most people in America know them. Um, and the audience connects to the show by uh, the show having uh, characters that resonate with them directly, that they can relate to. Whereas in America, this sort of escapism, which is what the genre really well personifies, is, is not uh, characters they can relate to, but characters they can escape to. So right. I think it's quite right representative of the differences between the two cultures to a very significant degree. It's like the type of entertainment, uh, the way in which it's communicated, the dialogue, the beats, the, you know, the whole thing is representative of uh, a number of things. And, of course, they're representative of values as well. You know, a soap opera represents the values of that society. So American soap opera values, if you do something wrong, you get caught. Uh, right. Shooting in your foot's wrong, you get called there are consequences. Murder is wrong, you get called there are consequences. And obviously, those are obvious ones, and they're, they're similar between the two countries, but there are subtle, more nuanced values that are different, and you get to see those at the shows as well. Uh, it's interesting culturally as well. We're talking today about doing a gay storyline on the show. Well, it was 31 years ago in England, that EastEnders did the first story about a character who had HIV. This was in the oh, 80s. wow. It was when AIDS was only killing homosexuals in San Francisco, and it was the plague of, you know, all, I mean, all these ridiculous notions all these complete, you know, idiots had. Right. Um, and they not only did a storyline about HIV, but they did it about a heterosexual man. Um, to completely upend all of the stereotypes from the values. They had the first uh, gay kiss. Now, they did it 30 years ago, but they had it. And the front mm-hmm. page of the local uh, London newspaper had the word filth on it in large letters. That was how controversial it was. Um, so, culturally in England, some of these issues that you're tackling now in the mainstream, you know, in, in, in Europe, they were dealing with these things many, many years ahead. I think in terms of social values, there's a big disparity. America is massively, massively more conservative, massively more. And that's represented in the soap hmm. I guess that's what makes us all different, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying one's better than the other. But they're right, better. right, yeah. Yeah. Now there was it, it, one it, it, other girl that said, "I'm sorry." One other girl that said, "Please wish uh, James a happy anniversary." Is today your anniversary on Dave? I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> well, she wishes you a happy anniversary. <laughs> uh, no, I have no idea what that is. So, okay. Uh, I think it was well, around this time. Yeah, uh, in, in what you were talking about with, uh, you know, the, the, the European uh, culture versus, you know, United States, it's a shame that other cultures have embraced those type of storylines and and stuff over, you know, much, much earlier than, than, than we are getting here in the United States. And um, I'm always looking for good storytelling. And if somebody can and can – do it like they're doing it now on days and on Bold the Beautiful and on prime time and movies. If they can do it in a good way to help represent our, you know, our community uh, in the in the gay community, it would it would help a lot because you know now we have the president who's endorsing and saying and right. for it. So I mean we're 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 heading in the right direction with that with that. It's just I wish that I wish everybody can just leave well alone and let everybody be happy because you only live once. That's my thing. I mean, but exactly. unfortunately. We don't. Well, we can't. We can't do that. Yeah, I mean, America is, I think, a much more socially conscious country. But also, unfortunately, the politicians would much rather that you cared about two men living together and getting married, that you care about their economic or their foreign policy, or that you look into it in any detail, because nobody wants that kind of scrutiny. So they come up with these social issues that. Uh, Distract the electorate on uh, uh, issues that are really a non-entity to a significant degree. I mean, if you live in a state that they, they suddenly make gay marriage illegal, it's not going to, you know, the world's not going to come to an end. It's really not going to have that much impact on your life in a negative way. They have positive yeah. impact on lots of people's lives, so though. They're sort of, it's, it's to everybody's advantage to polarize people on silly things. 
Yeah. Um, a minute ago when you were talking, when she uh, Pam brought up uh, All My Children, um, I, I, uh, someone on Twitter named Mark H. So asked if, if his AMC character's arc ended early, if you were glad it ended early, and do you have any positive nostalgia from the time on All My Children? Could you repeat the question? I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear it. Oh, uh, he says, in retrospect, are you glad your AMC character's arc ended early, or do you oh, yeah. have... And do you have any positive nostalgia? Um, I love being on the show, and they couldn't have killed me off at a better time. Um, I mean, I would have liked to have stayed, but I left, and two weeks later, somebody offered me a phone call to move back to Los Angeles, which is where I prefer living, and they were going to pay me twice as much money. So it didn't, oh. work, out <laughs> didn't work out too badly for me. So at the time, obviously, you don't necessarily see that. Um, I had very good experiences. It was my first show. It's a network-run show. It's very well-run. They have very talented, I had very talented actors. And I was thrown in to work with Alicia Minshew and Tolson Kay, who were ex- extremely, extremely talented actors, right. um, mm-hmm. and uh, into a big storyline. And it was a great uh, way to learn about the genre and also to train as an actor. And it was an absolute pleasure. I, I mean, I really... Uh, I had very little but uh, fantastic things to say about my experience. They were a lovely cast, fantastic crew, and uh, I think it's a great shame that they were cancelled. I also sort of feel, unfortunately, it's rather unnecessary. They uh, were cancelled, um, but, you know, I don't make the decisions. Yeah, if, 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 and that's how kind of where the show, our show, uh, Pam and I, have that I created – uh, had come from. We're we're working really hard to save the four remaining soaps and also find make a home for uh, soaps to go to because of SoapNet being canceled as well. We're trying to find a, a cable dedicated a soap dedicated channel to be on cable uh, as well as trying to show that the need for soaps uh, is there and we're not going to let any more go without a fight. And we're working really hard. First, our my show was just going to be a weekly show where people just call in and talk about their passion for their soaps. And then I thought, well, let me see if I can reach out to the, the cast members of all these different soaps, past and present, both the canceled ones and the ones that are still on the air. And since I've done that, we've been booked four nights a week for the last few months, and we're, we're, we're approaching our six-month anniversary already. And, and we're, we're, there's people that are, you know, as Lauren has done, you know, to get you, there's, there's talk on sets about what, our, what we're doing. So Pam and I are working really hard to help protect your future and our future as fans because we want – uh, we need this place because we need this place of soap world because we use it as a therapy and you guys are like a family to us. Uh, we will we look forward to seeing you every single day and and if we lose another soap, it's just going to just destroy so many more people who are fans. You know, we're we're working really hard to to do it. So that's sort of like a little backstory. Well, I appreciate that. I um, you know, there's no reason why the soaps can't have a future. If you look at uh, shows like Mad Men, who get a smaller audience than any of the shows it costs as much to produce, uh, the the move to cable is obvious. The problem is this, and uh, Passion's proved this, although it was hard to qualify it exactly. When you move a show, uh, there was a time, for example, when Fox was interested in buying Days of Our Lives. Didn't really go any of those conversations they had. But, um, uh, if you move to another channel, you lose, they estimate, 60 to 70 percent of your audience overnight. Really? Because people don't change. People yeah. don't change. If you move to a cable channel, uh, people don't move. And there's two reasons for that. One is people may not have that channel, they may have to buy it. So it's economically impactful or, you know, uh, prohibitive. And the, the second reason is that um, uh, it is, um, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people, uh, they say the majority of people uh, who watch soap operas have that television on that channel for between four and six hours a day. And that means they're mm-hmm. watching programming. So if you're on CBS, you're watching The Price is Right, Young and the Rest, The Soul, The Beautiful, and whatever's on after that. You just get used to all of those channels in that order, and that's what you watch. And that's a very significant part of the audience. And mm-hmm. uh, if you could move the genres to another ne- another medium, and cable is much less expensive than network television. The licensing fee is much less for those. If you could move it over, and you could move the audience, 
then the shows would be in a very strong position. But typically what's been determined is that the audience does not move. And yeah. that's the challenge, is to find a way to move the shows laterally across the medium without diminishing the audience. I'll tell you one of the things that may really help with that is on demand. When you begin to have shows that are available on demand, um, people are less likely to stay on the channel the whole time because they can get it whenever they want to. And right. they download from the Internet, so, you know, uh, what what is the channel? Do you even know what it is? Does it matter? Not really. Right. So, you know, it's an interesting time for media at the moment, and I think there are potential platforms for soap opera which maybe don't exist or haven't become very prominent yet, but, uh, you know, there are opportunities for them. Prospect Park, I'm sure you're familiar with, is trying to do Oh, something. yes. Well, I think they were somewhat overambitious in trying to make a play for those two shows, and uh, I feel that, uh, you know, if you're going to take a soap opera, uh, it's going off the air and pick it up and put it on uh, online, uh, your first show has to be the day after its last show. You can't wait six months to do it. And they seem to have some production issues and other things. And, uh, you know, you have to be ready to react to something like that. Uh, but these new platforms could be successful. And as I say, the financial model of a soap opera vis-a-vis other cable channels is a good one. So it's just about working out what works. But also, you know, soap operas, frankly, in my opinion, don't do themselves that many favors. Um, they, for the most part, write to a medium and a structure that, you know, flourished in the 70s and the 80s and the early 90s. And the audience has matured since then. They yeah. just have, you know. And uh, I feel like, <clears throat> in my personal opinion, the way the soap operas are reacting to a diminishing audience is by having less and less confidence in the audience and in good storytelling and relying more on a show that packs a punch at the end of every episode or the end of every act. Whereas mm-hmm. previously, you'd have a show that would eat its way into a Friday night build-up and you'd have to wait until Monday to find out what happened. And right. now they feel like they have to, you know, for, for example, the average person watches, watches a soap opera three days a week. So the show's right for the people who watch three days a week. So they put in the information from all the other days that if you didn't see Tuesday but you saw Monday and now it's Wednesday, they can bring you up to speed. Well, okay, well, that's catering to the weakness of the show. Uh, if it were me, I'd write a show that's so good you can't miss a day. Right. You know, and that's sort of uh, emblematic of some of these, you know, um, some of these problems. The industry seems to be one that is afraid at the moment, and when it gets afraid, it's going back to what it considers to be the sort of safe staples of soap, when it doesn't want to try anything really new. Um, and I think that that's not always good advice. I mean, if you look at what Frank Valentini's done with General Hospital, he's shown that you can hold on to those traditional values, but you can make them contemporary, and you can improve the storytelling and make it, you know, give it a more contemporary vibe. And the reality of that is that the audience does go up, you know, that the audience are not stupid. They are engaged. You you have to treat them like they're intelligent, and you have to treat them with respect. And I feel like sometimes soap operas don't always have enough respect for their audience. Yeah, yeah. We, give, we give kudos to uh, Frank and Ron both for what they've done for General Hospital. One Life to Live was amazing, and I, I bet the highest rated um, – it was at the time it was canceled and you know more people need to think on the same level that they do and storytelling it just every every soap would be great well i think you also need young people in there you know right you have the majority of people producing these shows uh who've been in their jobs for a long time right and how could you have a fresh eye without a fresh perspective Exactly. <laughs> I'm probably not going to win any friends by saying this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, we're, we're right there with you. Yeah. But I feel it's true. You know, you, you, you just you can't keep – if something's not working, you have to change it. And, and I feel like you, know, you just need to 
you have a big audience, I have an audience that is very loyal, and I feel like it's, now is the time when you need to start making some some brave choices, you know. And I think it'll work. Yeah. Frank Valentini has shown that it does. Yeah. What What is your opinion on the revolving door of the actors that just came back that are so loved and now all of a sudden they're gone again? Uh, on our show? Or on yes. Um, what is my opinion on that? Um, uh, I think it's uh, representative of a show that is in a state of um, distress. You know, I think it's representative of a show that is um, trying to throw things at a wall to see what sticks. And what they're not realizing is uh, they need to build the wall before they start throwing things at it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, uh, when you make as many changes as our show has made, how many head writers or, or executive producers we've been to, I don't know. It's not a sign of strength, it's a sign of weakness, and it's a sign of, you know, dysfunction. And they need to get on top of that, and they need to start being consistent. And, um, you know, I feel like Gary Tomlin is coming in now as head writer. I like Gary. He knows the show. He knows the characters. Um, I think that he, uh, you know, I think he's somebody who, um, is a very smart choice to bring in as head writer. I was certainly very happy to hear him come in. Um, they'll do a many aspects of the, you know, the the show that Dan and Marlene wrote. I mean, everything you're watching now, which you're praising, they wrote. Um, so we'll see. You know, we'll see. As far as the actors changing around, it's disappointing. You know, I think it's disappointing. Um, that they would do that. I don't know why. I, you know, I feel like Sarah Brown is a wonderful actress. I really yeah. think she's fantastic. I don't think they used her enough, unfortunately, but she could have been a tremendous asset to the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, I, um, I think Christy Clark's wonderful. I mean, Patrick Mordeen's wonderful. You know, I think that, uh, but by the same token, we have a lot of people on the show. Right. You know, yeah, so we know everybody it's, it's can't be, you know, in front at the same time. It's, it's it's nice just to see them back again, I guess, for the people that, like myself, watched them over the years, and then they were gone, and now they're back again, and we're like, oh, yay, and then all of a sudden, oh, no, they're gone again, you know? Well, I don't feel like, you know, you don't always have to make it so cut and dry. Not mm-hmm. to get the technicalities, but you can have people on contract, and you can have people coming back on reoccurring roles. Right. You don't, you know, you can have people coming in and out of the show with enough frequency to make them present, but that's that's above my pay pay grade to make the decisions. And Lauren is sending you a message: love from mommy dearest to my darling stepson slash lover slash partner in crime. <laughs> oh, that's that's very sweet of her. <laughs> very sweet of her. Uh, she is something else. She is she is great, and and. I know you guys. You guys probably have so much fun on on set together. Um, you guys are both. We do. Amazing. Oh, we do. We have an absolute blast. She is really, really fantastic. Yes. No. She she is uh, about as much fun as you can have with your clothes on, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, since we have to cut short at nine or at, well nine forty five here in about uh, eleven minutes, I need to. We're going to take a couple callers. We normally have a lot longer for the callers, but we'll have you back later in the fall, and we can take more callers then if you're if you're able to come sure. back in the fall. Um, so let me go ahead and get a couple on here. Uh, for those that are listening, uh, try to make it quick since we're running out of time, and there's like quite a few people on here. So let's uh, start here first with Travis. He was the first one to call in. Second, while I pull that up. Uh, there we go. Travis, you're on with James. Go ahead. Hi, James. Hello, Travis. How are you? Very well. I'm a huge uh, Dave fan. Been a fan for many, many years. And I just want to thank you for all you do on the show. Uh, you guys are just amazing. You put on a great show. Uh, so just thank you very much for that. And I just wanted to, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Uh, I wanted to ask you what your favorite moment has been on Days, if you had to choose one moment out of, you know, the whole time you've been on. Because you've been on for 
quite a while now. What what would be your favorite moment? Favorite moment? Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> um, well, that's a pretty difficult question. Um, favorite moment. Oh my goodness. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, you know, I can't tell you because it hasn't aired yet. Oh, that's frustrating. Oh. Um, <laughs> ah, goodness. So my second favorite moments we would have to do. Uh, there's something coming up with Alice and Sweeney and I that is going to be my favorite moments. Um, and we just shot it, so you'll see it in a few weeks. Um, it's a lot of fun. Second favorite awesome. moments. Yeah, it's it's really it's really good. It's uh it's uh there's um what can I say? There's a huge big event that happens and it's a part of that. And it's very exciting. It's one of the most exciting things that we've done on the show in, in uh in quite some time and I know that everybody's going to really like it. Well that's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's perfect, James. Um I just want to say I'm a huge fan, love what they're doing the gay storyline, and just look forward to seeing what's, you know, to come with Dave. And just thanks for taking the time to come on the, the show. We, we appreciate it. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much for calling in. Thank you, Travis. You're very welcome. Thanks, Travis. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. Uh, we have someone calling from Denmark. Her name is Stacy. She's been on hold this whole time for you, James. Stacy, welcome to the show from Denmark. Hi, James. Oh, thank you. Stacy, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. And my question thank is... Thank you. Yes. By the way, I love, I love EJ, I love Sammy, I love the Sammy. And my question is, do you still believe in EJ and Sammy as a couple? Do I think they will be a couple? No, do you still believe in EJ and Sammy as a couple? Do I believe in them? Yeah. As a couple? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. They have incredible sexual chemistry. Uh, and I feel like, yeah, I mean, this doesn't matter how you how you spice it and dice it. Um, they are two people who are very, very drawn to one another uh, and feel very connected to one another. And, uh, you know, I have to say, all the time that I've been on the show, um, you know, they have never really written that relationship, and I would really like to see them do it at some point because I do feel like... Um, it's one that has a lot of potential, um, so we'll have to wait and see. They seem determined not to write it, but <laughs> whatever it is. Um, but yes, I do think so. You know, I mean, EJ has really only had <clears throat> two significant love interests. I mean, obviously there was uh, uh, Nicole's sister um, briefly, but it goes back to yeah. to Nicole and Sammy, and I do feel that it is very conflicted, but there's certainly the potential for a great relationship with either one of those, so, uh, certainly uh, uh, with Samantha as much as Nicole. Thank you. Well, thank you, Stacey, for calling welcome. and staying on hold. Bye, Jay. Thank Bye-bye, you very much dear. for thank calling. You for calling. All right. Up next is Rose. Rose, you're on with James. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. Hi, Rose. <laughs> Hi. Hello. How Hello, are you? Rose. How are you? I'm very well. Thank I'm you. Do- How are you? I'm I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Um, my biggest question is, what got you? What was your? What really got you into acting? I mean, was it something you've always wanted to do? And who would be your um, role model towards that? Um, yeah, it wasn't something that I always wanted to do, but it was always something that I felt I would do, if that makes any sense. Um, uh, you know, it's something that uh, I've been, uh, I, I have really, I, I wanted to do it for a long time. I, I got into it when I was young, which was a good time. And uh, in terms of a role model, oh, that's a difficult question to answer. I don't know that I've ever really modeled myself. Um, I don't know that I've really modeled myself on any one specific uh, actor. Um, it's a good question, though. <laughs> so how did you get into the acting world? I mean, um, just... I just, uh, you know, I decided it was something I wanted to do, so I just started studying. I um, went to uh, uh, school in England, and then I went to school in California, and before I knew it, 
I you were acting. Lucky. <laughs> uh-huh. Very, very good. Very good. And, and of course, you know, we all love you, and and you do such a great job as as, as any character you play. And um, it's just really great for you to be able to chat with your fans like this. We, we're very appreciative of it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much for calling. Thank, Thank you. you Rose. Thanks, Rose. All right. Up next is um, another Pam. Pam, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Hi, James. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good. Um, I would like to know what's your favorite movie and who's your favorite actor and actress? Uh, favorite movie. What's my favorite movie? Oh, goodness. Um, favorite movie, favorite movie, favorite movie. Um, you know, I'd love to give some, some really sort of highbrow, intellectual, artsy, intelligent answer. But I'm sort of going somewhere between. If I if I I'm gonna sit down and watch a movie, um, something that I've seen many times, it would be it could be The Goonies, it could be Ghostbusters, it could be Goodfellas. Um, yeah, I'm really um, I certainly like a pretty diverse range of cinema and film. But uh, in terms of the one that I the ones that I watch the most, I watch things that are fairly mindless and entertaining. Um, in terms of an actor and actress, an actress, I'd say Helen Mirren, um, <clears throat> and an actor, uh, Sir Ian McKellen. Mm, very good. I love The Goonies. It was a great movie. It was a great movie. Great movie. Yeah. Well, I'll get going, and thank you very much, and I enjoy watching you every day on Days. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Thanks, Pam. Bye. Bye. All right. Uh, we'll take one last call before we go. Uh, just a second here. Uh, this is David from Canada. David, go ahead. You're on with James. Uh, hey, James. Uh, how are you doing tonight? I'm very well, thank you, David. How are you? I'm pretty good. Um, I just wanted to say is that I'm a really huge fan of yours, um, um, and I've been watching you since you came onto the show. And, and hmm, what else? I'm kind of um, starstruck right now, so... <laughs> oh, please, don't be silly. Trust me, I'm nobody excited. Right at this very moment, I'm walking around Whole Foods trying to grab some vegetables to throw in the back of the car before I go and get some dinner with some friends. So, um, you know, yeah. you're talking to nobody exciting, trust me. Well, <laughs> well uh, so, anyway, um, I wanted to say one thing and then to ask my question. Um... um like if I like if I were to choose a show for you to guest star in, um, I would like you, um, I would like to see you be on uh, the uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Game of Thrones. Oh, I like that. That's a wonderful show, and they hire quite a lot of English people, so um, I would oh, yeah. like that very well, much. Of course. Okay. Um, the question I yeah, uh, are you ahead. were going to say something? No, no. Go ahead. So you were about to ask a question. Okay. Uh, the question I had was, I was wondering, with the English soaps, um, what's the difference between, like, the amount of uh, uh, the dialogue that 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 uh, that uh, you would do in a day, and and the amount of shows you do in a day? Um, well, that's a good question. Um... The difference in terms of the amount of dialogue, I mean, they're set up fairly differently. Um, First of all, they all last for half an hour, so right off the bat you have a little bit less material, but they, for the most part, don't have any commercial breaks um, because the way television in England works, um, the majority of the channels don't have commercials. uh, Oh, really? So... (laughs) Yeah, they, um, they you pay a licensing fee um, uh, for the BBC television service, which is, I think, about £100 a year. So what's that, £9 a month, so what's that, $12 a month, something like that. And uh, you don't get any uh, commercials. There are some commercial television stations, but I think most of the subs are on the commercial stations. Um, and so that means that when you read it, our show is 42 minutes uh, over an hour. So these shows are... Uh, something like 28 minutes over half an hour. So not a huge difference. Um, 
Uh, in terms of uh, the amount of shows they shoot here, they, I really don't know. You know, I feel they have multiple crews in multiple locations, so they can shoot more. Uh, we have one crew in one studio. Also, a lot of their stuff they shoot outdoors. Um, so, you know, and this is a very different operation. When you have, uh, they, I think that they have more in terms of budget to be able to play with than we do. So, uh, you know, I'm not that familiar with it, but, but my, my guess would be that uh, they, they shoot less shows in more time and uh, that the way that the scripts work uh, is that they are probably a little bit lighter per character and a little bit heavier overall. Wow. Okay. Uh, thanks for taking uh, thanks for taking my call. Thank you. Well, it was my thank pleasure. You, David. Thank you very much for calling in. Thank okay, you, thank David. You. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, I can probably take just... one more caller if you like. I'm just uh, I'm actually running a bit late, so. Okay. Uh, I, I can have one more question if you wish. All right. Next one is that's uh, area code seven six zero. I didn't get your name, but you're on with James. Hi, I'm Jennifer. How are you doing, Jane? I'm well, Jennifer. How are you? I am doing great. Even better now that I'm talking to you. <laughs> well, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Well, you are my favorite character on the show. Um, I, I'll try to make it as quick as possible. I'm just. Um, my question is, what are your favorite qualities about EJ? My favorite qualities. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I feel that Idre is a man with very few redeeming qualities. He's kind of a, uh, he's sort of a uh, selfish, petty narcissist who uh, is uh, kind of a prick most of the time. Um, <laughs> he's kind of well, that's what I love about him. <laughs> well, I suppose that would sort of be true. Maybe that's some of my favorite qualities as well, you know. Um, he is... Uh, um, He's certainly somebody who, um, I, you know, I have fun with him. The nice thing about him as a character is he doesn't really have any boundaries. Um, and that means that uh, <clears throat> I think that, um, uh, you know, it really means that uh, he's able to make choices as an actor. I'm able to make choices as an actor without any real limitations, which is the loss of fun for me. Uh, so that well, would be my answer. The fact that he doesn't really have, you know, if you play Bo Brady, he's a good guy. So right. he has to act within certain parameters. If you play EJ, you can be a good guy if you want to. You can be a bad guy if you want to. You really get to do how you play it. Right, right. Well, I think my favorite quality about EJ is his love for his kids. And you can always see that coming through, and and that, yeah, that's his redeeming quality. You know, that, and, you know usually what you'll find is um, that is how he is redeemed in the show. In, uh, right. So he'll do something terrible, and in some way, his appreciation for his family will cause him to uh, repent, if you like. Right, right. Oh, like I said, that's my favorite quality, and I love the bad EJ, so. Well, thank you. I enjoy playing him uh, when he's bad, too. You know, yeah, thank you, too. Bit, he has a glint in his eye, and he's, he's just playing around with people. It's fun. Yeah, that looks like it's a lot of fun. So. Well, thanks so much for talking to me. Thank you. Thanks for yeah, calling thank in. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, James, I, I one thing that everybody is asking us is, will you ever join Twitter to talk to your fans? Uh, you know, that's a very good way of putting that question. Um, I, I, you know, I, um, I have to say, I'm not a big one for social media. I, I, I'm not somebody who... You know, I don't know that that much exciting happens in my life that anyone would be really interested in. And, and I, I feel like a lot of the information that people put out there on Twitter is fairly innocuous. And uh, I'm yeah. also extremely private. And, and there's very little in my life that I really care to share with many people. And so I don't really know what the – I can understand – I don't know. I don't really think Twitter's for me. You know, it's just not yeah. – uh, 
And also, can I tell you that I, I went on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook, but I was for about, maybe I joined for three months. I didn't go on there once. I mean, I really, I don't know how people have time to do all this kind of stuff. It's, you know, some people, yeah. ask you, I mean, she's uh, uh, tweeting and she's Facebooking and she's blogging and she has touts that she uses, all of these things. And it's amazing yeah. what it does. You know, she connects with so many people. It's really incredible. Um, but I have to say, it's, uh, it's she's just sort of technically minded like that. I mean, uh, you know, I don't, my cell phone doesn't work within two miles of my house, and I love it. So, yeah. You know, you can't yeah. get hold of me for the the time. Uh, I, you know, I'm not somebody who likes to be that easy to get hold of, but I, I, I like, I don't know, I, I, I I'm just not one of those people who is very sort of, you know, into all that kind of thing. Um, and I, yeah. the fans are they're very kind. They keep asking and they're so very patient. But um, my answer, I'm afraid, is that I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. And my concern would be, honestly, if I did do it, I really think I'd do a terrible job. It's just not <laughs> one of those things innately. I do. I think I'd be awful. I don't feel like... Um, I'm terrible at replying to people. Awful. If you send me an email, you'd be lucky if you get a reply within a week. And, you know, <laughs> my, my voicemail message uh, on my uh, uh, phone, I just got a new phone, so I haven't updated this one yet, but it usually says, Hi, this is James. You've reached my phone. Please know that I don't check my messages every day and not until the weekend. <laughs> and I have to that because I don't check my messages every day, and I never check them on the weekends. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, I would just be the worst possible Twitter retweety person uh, yeah. <laughs> ever. There's a tremendous exercise in frustration for anybody who uh, who signed up to follow me. I, I think they'd find me to be very boring. Well, we, I, I personally and a lot of us in the chat room say that we respect your privacy and, yeah. and, and, the, and the lack of interest in it. But, you know, I just wanted to let, you know, the fans are wanting to be able to do it. And if you ever did do it, you could just leave your tweets to be just <laughs> to reply once a month, you know, just to have that connection with your fans if you ever did do it. But otherwise, we, you know, what, what, and what, a lot of people don't realize this, and I talk to a lot of cast members, they, they get on it, and then they become addicted to it, and then they're on it all the time, like right. Alison Sweeney is. Well, so, uh, well that, I have to be candid with you. I see a lot of uh, celebrities who I have what I think is a very uh, uh, unhealthy relationship with Twitter. You know, and I see yeah. a lot of, it's a sort of, um, it, the whole thing is kind of a lie, really. You know, people, well, it's sort of a false relationship. Where yeah. You talk to people, but you don't know who they are, but they have an investment in you. But their investment has bias as well. You know, they, they either really like you or they really hate you. Or, you know, they always have some sort of, thing. and I see a lot of actors who try and get application to you know, they'll send out something in such a way that people will give them a positive affirmation for certain. And some people I know tweet a lot, and I think it's a sort of a. I actually think it's a little bit dangerous. But I'm I'm sort of a uh, I'm sort of a, a kind of bar humbug like that. I just you know I'm just sort of uh, skeptical of all that kind of stuff. So I know that it has a lot of there are a lot of many great qualities about it. I know that in terms of Connecting with the audience is very valuable. Uh, I know that it can be a great uh, uh, thing to have if you wish to keep people informed of what's going on and, and your personal life or your work life, events and promotions and things like that. I also know that, um, you know, uh, if you get lost in the middle of the jungle and you can treat people, you can get a whole army coming to find you. So. You're right. <laughs> Yeah. And you do, and you do like to go in the jungle, so I know that. So you may want to keep that in mind. I just got back from the jungle recently, actually, in Burma. Oh, you were in Burma? I was in Burma. I got lost in the jungle uh, three times. First time I got lost, I came across an army camp, and the military were very nice. They were a little suspicious. They thought I was a spy at first. <laughs> oh, no. They sent me back through the jungle, and... Uh, I got to make my way through watching out for the uh, Burmese python and the spiders that were the size of my hand. 
Oh my gosh. Well, it was it was interesting. It was very fun, and I I backpacked around Burma for three weeks. Just took my rucksack and uh, a compass and uh, and hiked through all the mountains and uh, had a lovely time. I I slept in very old monasteries, sort of hidden away on the floor with all the monks, um, and I slept with farmers in the huts in in rice paddies, and uh, and really had. Amazing, amazing trip. I was very lucky to be able to do that. So, yes, I love getting lost in the jungle. I like jungles very much. <laughs> well, um, I will, will we, we're going to wrap this up because I know you've got to get going to your event. So I want to, first off, thank you so much for coming. Uh, we This has been an honor for Pam and I and all of your fans to be able to have this opportunity. And I know you don't do these very often, so um, I really do appreciate it. And we would love to have you back in the fall after we have some more storyline built up to talk about as well. So thank you so much, well, and Pam, I'll let you. Well, I'll just say before I disappear that um, no, I, I really enjoyed being on, and uh, I, I am very happy that I came. And it would be my pleasure to come back in the fall, and I uh, look forward very much to doing so. All Thank right. you. And when you come back, I'd like to, since we didn't get a chance to talk about it, um, I want to talk about you being the co-founder of You Are the Solution. Ah, okay. We can have a chat about that. I can mention something to you, actually, for all those people who are frustrated with me not tweeting. At okay. some point in the next few months, I will be launching a blog. So, oh, good. So I will I will be communicating a tiny bit with the outside world. So that that will be coming up. Uh, we're just starting the planning now, so it will be a few months away. But um, I'll let you know okay. when it happens. Wonderful. Oh, that's, that's perfect. We could put the link on our website once we know what it is, and everybody can read it then. All right. Well, have a, have a great time tonight with your, uh, your, your event and your friends, and thank you for spending the hour with us. And give Lauren a big O hug from us for, yes, for having her to help us get you on here. And she's also going to work to get Chandler with us as well. So uh, if you could oh, put a good. whisper in, in, Ch- in Chandler's ear to remind him as well. He, he, we, uh, his fans are dying to talk oh. to him as well. I'll make sure Chandler comes on board. Uh, and I just want to say as well, I really appreciate on behalf of everybody who works in the in the industry, you know, not just the actors, but also the, the hundreds or th- thousands even of people who support the show and production and, uh, and the crew. Uh, thank you for all that you're doing and trying to support the industry and the shows. Uh, I, I, I certainly uh, know I speak for a lot of people when I say I'm tremendously grateful for all of your hard work. Uh, well, we, we, we're... We definitely appreciate that, and we are all we're all working hard for you. Wonderful. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. God Good bless. Night, Bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, uh, wow. I just need a moment. I just need a moment of silence I know, before right? everybody leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to even. Okay. I know. <laughs> wow. That was. I don't. I don't. A, seriously, I don't even know what I said. <laughs> I don't know what I said. I don't even know if I asked him any questions. I don't even know what I don't even know what his answers are. I may this may be the first interview I go back and listen to. I know. Uh, I mean, I mean and, this, and I could I listen to him talk and some things are in my head, but it's just that voice. That voice. Yeah. I mean, you just hear that voice and you kind of go off into dreamland. And not necessarily yeah. that you're dreaming about him being naked in front of you. It's just that he has that voice that's hypnotizing. That's what it yeah. is. It's hypnotizing. Yeah. It's, it's just mesmerizing, hypnotizing. I don't even know what words they are, but yeah, yeah. he's just <laughs> by far, he is our biggest uh, turnout. I haven't even looked to see how many numbers, but we had up to 116 in the chat room. And the last I, really I saw it. was 119 or 120. Oh, wow, that's just great. So if you guys are still in here listening, keep listening because we're going to have our after show. Pam and I are just having a moment to ca- gather our composure. I need a drink, an alcohol, a shot, or something because, <laughs> oh, boy, I, he, uh, wow, what a pleasure. I'm so thankful to Lauren Coslow who played yes. Steve Demera on there to, 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 yes. to get him on here. Uh, what a, what a, God, I can't wait. we got to go to L.A. and just give her a big old hug. Uh, I know. Because. This has just been one of – this is right up there with one of my favorites. I, I mean, I enjoy all the interviews, but this was one that I was literally sweating bullets as it was mm-hmm. the first And, you know, I talked to him twice a day on the phone, and we were just talking like we've known each other forever. And But I was more nervous now having him on the air with you and everybody listening. And uh, it's just 
he's just amazing. He's just wonderful. And I, I have grown to love his character, you know, rewatching days now. And I just love, love, love him. And I'm so glad he was able to mm-hmm. send. Uh, uh, yes, everybody go and tweet Lauren Coslow, at Lauren mm-hmm. Coslow, K-O-S-L-O-W, and tell her thank you so much for bringing yeah. James to us. Uh, she said nothing but great things to um, anybody that we want on days. I'm sure Lauren could help us get. So we really, really appreciate that. Uh, she is the reason we got her, uh, got James tonight, and that we're getting Chandler in June. Uh, exactly. We don't have a date yet for Chandler, but we are getting Chandler in June. Um, uh, I this this seeing all the the stuff in the chat room right now just blows me away to to hear and see all the stuff you guys are talking about in the chat room. Uh, it's just it's so rewarding to know that we 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 bring this. We were able to. I was able to create this and bring Pam on board. Uh, I, I really wish Joyce, who was my original co-host, could, was able to be part of some of these shows because she is what helped started the show as well. Um, because this is just amazing, and we've we've had such a great turnout. We've been, like I was telling every guest that we have, we've become quite popular, and we're getting our name on the sets and stuff, and you know we're getting other actors to help us get actors and. You know, we have another actor on another show who's getting someone huge for us in June, um, but I'm not, I can't tell much more about that right now. But there's someone gigantic in the industry joining us in June. I'm very, very excited about. And Pam, you know who I'm talking about. Yes, I do. Uh, yes, I do. And uh, we 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 can't say anything about who it is yet because it's not official. But it's it's huge. It's. Uh, beyond comprehension for Pam and I that we could even get this person. So uh, we're very excited about that. But uh, we do have some new people that are going to be joining us uh, in the coming weeks. Um, Yesterday, I got word from Michael Mooney, who plays Adam Newman on Young and the Restless. He will be joining us in mid-July, so about the second or third week in July. We will be uh, able to bring you Michael Mooney, finally. We've been waiting about six or seven months, and we're also going to be getting Melody Thomas-Scott. We're working on getting a date for her. This has been a long time coming as well. She's very busy with filming and stuff, so we've had to reschedule a couple times. Uh, so we're getting Melody Thomas-Scott. And also we are getting Laura Lee Bell. She was originally supposed to be on yes or two days ago, but she has been rescheduled for June 27th. So June 27th, Laura Lee Bell will be with us. And uh, so that's really exciting. Uh, we've booked uh, Nathan Butler, who plays Dr. Ewan Keenan on General Hospital for June 5th. June 6th, we have uh, almost officially got Colleen Zink on. Uh, she played Barbara Ryan on Guiding Light. I'm sorry, As the World Turns. I get those two confused. Uh, <laughs> Um, as the world turns, so uh, she will be joining us uh, as well on June 6th. And we are working on a lot more people in the future. So we're really, really excited. If you, if you, Since we have a lot of listeners tonight, if you haven't heard of us before and, and you're seeing us featured on the blogtalk.com, uh, definitely go to the soapseries.com and check out our previous uh, interviews uh, by going to the right-hand side and going to the archives and looking at all the different people that we've interviewed so far since January 3rd of uh, this year, which was our first anniversary, or first interview, and also our upcoming schedule. Um, for example, next week we have Old Dog's New Tricks on Monday, which is the casting creator of that with Leon Accord and the crew. And let me say, Monday. do not miss monday's web series even if you haven't watched old dogs new tricks yet i would highly recommend that you watch it but these guys are a blast a blast yeah. they are the funniest guys that you will ever hear and talk to in your life so yeah. please be here monday and if you want to watch it ahead of time their season one go to what is it old dogs new tricks the series or you can go to the com and go to the right-hand and side, scroll down to right. web series. Yeah. Right. And uh, so, yeah, definitely uh, go and check out there. It's only five or six episodes, and you can get it done within a half hour, and you'll be caught up, and it's extremely funny. Um, yeah. Then Tuesday, we have Aaron Spears, who plays Justin Barber on Bull and the Beautiful, very handsome, talented young actor. Uh, then, well, I say young. He's my age, so I mean, I guess. <laughs> uh, guess young. Uh, then Wednesday we have Ricky Paul Golden, uh, who was on many soap operas, All My Children, and uh, Young and Restless, and uh, Guiding Light. Guiding Light, or was it 
Yeah, and uh, and somebody said something. Uh, either as the world turns or another world. Somebody told me another the other world, day. A- another world, another yes, world, yeah. another world. I, w- I remember watching some videos of him as well. Um, then we. Oh, by the way, thank you, Brandon, for letting uh, getting Colleen Zink to come to our show. That's yeah. one thing we definitely recommend. Is you know, if you guys want somebody on the show, we you know they may miss our tweet invite. So if you and tweet them and invite them. And, and tag us in it at the Soap Series on Twitter, then you will be able to, uh, you know, I, w- I would love for you to uh, be able to uh, call in and definitely, you know, be part of that show. Uh, so then Thursday we have Catherine Hicklin, who most of you know from uh, One Life to Live, and she was married to the, the Night Rider guy, David Hasselhoff. Hasselhoff. I, I remember, her from, <laughs> I remember, I remember that. And then yeah. you know, Snapper, Snapper on Younger Restless back when I was just a little sperm. Yeah, um, <laughs> and so. she was married to Michael E. Knight, my dad yeah. from All My Children, yes. Yeah. And now yeah. she's yeah. engaged to Debbie Reynolds' son. Oh, very cool. So I'm, actually, I'm, I'm, need, I'm excited about that. Um, a lot of people are in there talking about we need uh, people, we need more Days stars. Well, we just started inviting Days last yeah. month. We've had Ian Buchanan on. We've had Lauren Coslow. We've had Patrick Muldoon. And now we've had... Uh, our tonight's guest, James Scott. I think that's who all we've had so far from. I think Dave. so too. And yeah. we've had James. Uh, we had Jason Cook, who used to be Sean on days, Brady, Sean days but he's now re- uh, leaving his role in General Hospital. So, so, um, but like I said, if you want somebody, go Facebook them or tweet them and tag us in it, so that way they can reply and we can try to get that hooked up for you because you know we 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 do our best. We work all day for this for you guys. So. Um, we are working also, on getting more. Also, you know what? Not to interrupt you. Um, thank you, Eleanor, for putting out the link for all dogs' new tricks. Oh yes, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, that's what our show is. August. Uh, he's saying we need more soap stars. Period. Well, I mean, that's what our show is. Is, is right. soap stars of uh, past and present plus web series. So uh, we're, we're branching out to every direction possible. Um, then the following also, week- you know what, too, before I lose my train of thought, I'm sorry to interrupt you again. There's a lot of events coming up, and you're going to be meeting the stars there. Let them know about our show. Yeah. Tell them you want them to come on. Write it down on a piece of paper for our website. Give them our Twitter names, something, you know, just yeah. to get them in contact with us. I'm going to Loving Landview, and I – Fully intend. I'm talking to Michael Easton and um, whoever else I can even think now. Trevor St. John and you know whoever's going to be there. I can't think right now. I still have James on my brain. <laughs> yeah, right now it's all about James. Right now. Uh, uh, so yeah, and then um, and, and in case you're still listening, still you know our our numbers are dwindling because everybody's left. Yeah. Uh, uh, but also the last week of May, we have on Monday, the last week of May, I don't have the dates, like 25th, I think it is, 26th, uh, is Ragged Isle, which is on the SFN network, um, sfntv.com. They're going to be the casting creators going to be on with that, with this on that Monday. Tuesday, we have Andrea Bogart, who played Abby on General Hospital. Wednesday, we have Christoph St. John from Young and the Restless, who plays Neil Winters. And then we have soap event coordinator Jason Spitzer on May 31st. Uh, he'll be with us to dish uh, his experience with working with soap stars, soap events, and uh, some upcoming events that he's planning. So, uh, and he likes to talk. He doesn't hold back. So be prepared for a very juicy show. Yes, I like juicy. I like juicy ones very well. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really excited about that. So we have a, we have a variety. We've, we, each month we try to get as many from, you know, from all the soaps. So, you know, Mondays are usually our web series days. Tonight's a special day because – we never do them on Fridays because I usually do my other show, The Digital Futon, but that's been postponed until next Friday. Uh, but we did this because we were able to get James on a Friday, which is our first ever Friday. I'm so glad our first Friday show was with James Scott. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, I don't think okay. you or I will be able to sleep tonight. I know. I'm going to go back and listen to this. Like, as soon as I'm done, I want to play <laughs> in the background and I want to listen. I just want to, like, just sit there in silence and listen to him. Uh, so yeah, definitely. I hope everybody. We had we had a great turnout tonight. But we had almost 120 people in the chat room tonight. I haven't even looked to see how many tuned in. I cannot wait to see. Uh, so hopefully we got some new people to follow us on Blog Talk. If you're on Blog Talk right now, click the follow button 
and it'll give you the opportunity to follow us, and you'll never miss a show. You'll get an email reminder, uh, you know, before our show starts, so you'll know. I try to invite people through Facebook uh, and Twitter. You know, the more people come, the, you know, the more word of mouth it gets. And you know, just like James said tonight, he heard fantastic things from Lauren about our show. So she must have had a good experience with us for her to be able to get James to join us. So it's all about word of mouth. So if you love soaps, we're doing this for you. We're doing this. I mean, we enjoy it. That's what we do. But of course. we're doing it for you. And we could hog up the whole hour with us talking to them. But, no, we have it usually a half-hour interview and a half-hour for the fans. So for those who didn't get a chance to get through tonight, we only have 15 minutes to take calls. So definitely uh, come back this fall when we have James come back in, uh, you know, maybe September, October. We'll have him back and, and have him for a full hour, and we can uh, – take a lot more calls because there was a lot of people on hold that I just couldn't get to you. So I do apologize and thank and thank you for the ones that did get through. I appreciate your time for holding, especially Stacy from Denmark calling and holding for 45 minutes. Oh, my minutes. gosh, God, God, yeah. God bless you. Your, your email, I mean, your, uh, your phone bill is probably going to be outrageous. But it's all mm-hmm. for James Scott. So to have that two or three minutes with James is just definitely worth it. And, um, um, but yeah, if you, like I'm, people are talking about in this thing, uh, in the chat room. If you haven't listened to any of our previous shows, if you're new to us, definitely go to thesoapseries.com. On the right-hand side, there's over 30 shows we've done since January, and we're you know booked for the rest of the month, and we're starting to book up June, and uh, you know we already have dates for July, you know July with Michael Mooney, and June 27th for uh, um, for uh, Laura Lee Bell from Chris Christine on Young Rice was. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited about that. Uh, well, I think we can. Uh, wrap us up. Uh, that's about all the excitement. Anything on your mind uh, while we're while Need we're to ask? <laughs> <laughs> James, James, James. Yes, James, James, James. God, God bless him. And look, and he was shopping at Whole Foods on the phone with us to pick up vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> I love his story about the jungle, but I mean, I give him a lot of credit. I, you, you, anyone that knows me or doesn't know me, I am terrified of spiders. And when he talked about spiders being big as your hand out there, I just about died. I was oh like, no. I, I would, I would poop my pants. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I did. I almost said cricket. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm so used. To, I mean, for me, yeah. she's. She's always cricket. She's cricket ever since she was brought on as Skip's niece. I think she was Skip's niece, uh, Skip and Carol. I don't know if you remember her or not, or them or not. Skip was a photographer, and uh, Carol was handicapped. She had polio, I think it was, and she walked with a limp and with a cane. Do you remember her at all? I'm trying to remember. I, I'd have to go back and look. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a, you know, a long time, but yeah, she that's how she first came on you know as a model and stuff. And I'll never forget when she dressed up with Nina to go try to get the baby back that Rose Deville kidnapped. And oh yeah, it was yeah Carol Robbins, thank you, Carol Robbins. And Skip was uh, uh, the the photographer that worked at uh, Jabot. And that's yeah. Anyway, so thank you everybody who tuned in and is still listening to our rambling. Um, you can always go and also subscribe to us on iTunes. Go in there and type in Soap Series, two different words, Soap Series, and you can hit subscribe and you can listen to any of our stuff on your iPod, iPad, iPhone, iMac, iBook, whatever you've got that's got an I before it, uh, you can download it. And um, so, yeah, thank you so that's much it. for listening. Uh, that's pretty much it. We will be back on Monday night with the cast and crew of Old Dogs and New Tricks. And we will talk to you then. Have a great weekend. Thank you so much for uh, spending the time with us. And thank you, Pam, for being with us tonight. Uh, and we will talk to you I'm all. I'm not very going soon. anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> all right. Well, until and, until next time. Yep. So, and thank you, everybody. Everything. God bless. Have a great weekend. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather.
in Salem as um, as a Demiro. Well, I'm very happy to be at the show. I, I enjoy it. It's a tremendous time. A great pleasure. So, so in your opinion, who do you think EJ's real love is? Is it do you think it's Sammy, or do you think it's uh, Nicole, or is it someone that the, that EJ hasn't probably even met yet? Um. Well, that's a very difficult question. You know, I think that um, um, in in life, uh, you know, they say that you uh, you relive three relationships in life. You relive your relationship with your mother, you relive your relationship with your father, and you relive their relationship. Mm-hmm. And I think that in a way, E.J. relives his relationship with his father through Nicole, who loved him absolutely, and she kept pushing her away. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had a tough time dealing with it in the same way that he has a sort of relationship with his father. And then, uh, you know, his relationship with his mother is very absent. His relationship with Sammy is very absent. And I feel like, you know, I think that E.J. has this big question mark that hangs over Sammy's head, you know, is she, you know, is, is she really this girl he's destined to be with? Is she really this girl that he's in love with? Is there really this sort of uh, future written in the stars for them? And there's never really been the opportunity to find out. And when mm-hmm. they work, they work wonderfully, and when they fight, they fight with the same sort of passion. And I think yeah. that it's a, a wonderfully dysfunctional relationship that they don't know how to separate from one another because they always feel they have to be attached, whether it be as friends the show for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what is the response to those, you know? I'm, I'm curious. Uh, well, first off, you, you, uh, you know, Sammy is always going to be Sammy. She always makes everything about herself. So, But uh, the fans are loving Chandler and, and, and his – his interpretation of this storyline, which is a great storyline. I think it's a very exciting uh, to see Days of Our Lives tackle this topic. Uh, it's it's not been done real well on daytime uh, over the course of history, and now we got Bull and the Beautiful, who just started a lesbian storyline this week as well. So, I mean, it's it's a good topic for for people to, to watch, and I think Chandler has done a great job by maybe helping other people who are dealing with the same topic in their own lives. And um, it's been really great. And then your chemistry with Chandler uh, as well is is wonderful. So many people love the, the interaction between EJ and Will as well. You know, I have to say, I'm a huge fan uh, of working with Chandler Massey. He's one of the most talented young actors I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Uh, and uh, the way that they've written the relationship between EJ and Will, I've really enjoyed. It's a sort of dysfunctional mentor, mentee, father-son relationship. I think that uh, in a strange way, EJ is the sort of missing father figure for William, who he seems to uh, uh, identify with and respect in some ways. And uh, then you have um, uh, EJ, who sees himself in this bad, you know, to a certain degree. And I think he also uh, has a lot of empathy for what William's going through. And um, and likes him, just really likes this kid. I like I like it a lot. I'm glad that you have kind things to say about it because it's been one of my favorite storylines over the last few months. Yes. And uh Pam, what what are your thoughts about the storyline and, 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 and such? Well, I love it. I I love that you blackmail each other, you and <laughs> and Chandler. <laughs> And you're you're sort of like a father figure to him, but also like a big brother since, you know, he already has a dad. And uh, you're standing by Sammy. I, I just love the whole storyline. I think it's great for the public to see. I think it's something phenomenal for Days to do. Well, thank you. Thank you. I have to say, I think the storyline about him struggling and coming to terms with his sexuality has been one of the uh, best-written storylines that we've had on the show in a long time. And, and he is just phenomenal. I mean, he's just an incredible actor. I, I, you know, I don't know that he will win the Emmy this year, but I don't think there's anyone more deserving. Yes, I yeah. totally agree. If I was on that yeah. committee, I would be right up there with him because he's he's really uh, – I'm actually a new – new old fan of the show. I used to watch the show in the 90s, and then I recently, when I saw about the storyline coming on, I wanted to see how Days was going to tackle it. And uh, 
in my opinion, you and Chandler carry the show. You guys make the show, and if you guys weren't on it, it wouldn't be nearly as entertaining because you guys have you bring a different dynamic. Uh, you, with, you know, with with uh, EJ and Sammy and EJ and Nicole, and then Chandler, or you know, uh, with with Will dealing with his sexuality. Those those powerful performances are just phenomenal, and I'm so glad I'm able to watch now. Uh, and you're a part of the show. I'm glad you're. You know, we were sad when you left all my children, but we were happy to see you be resurrected over. And... Uh, my day for me was wonderful. I was working with Lauren Coslow, uh, somebody who I adore and do not uh, work nearly enough with, in my opinion. I wish, 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 wish they wrote more scenes. For EJ and Kate, I think we have a lot of chemistry. I think we have a lot of fun. I know Lauren is uh, you know, one of my favorite actors to work with, so... Today was wonderful for that very reason. Um, well, I know I wouldn't mind seeing it because I love Lauren as well, and I think you two do have great chemistry together. Me too. It's a little bit complicated because she's married to my father, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we, have, we, have, we, have, we have chemistry in other ways as well. Which is right, right. <laughs> well, actually, now that we found out that he's not your father... You know, it might not be so rough. That is very true. That is very true. I wasn't quite sure where you were in terms of the air show. So maybe you could refresh me as to what exactly is airing, um, just to recap me as to where you are and also have to make sure that I don't give any information away. Right. Yeah, well, uh, this was the big week for uh, Will came out to his to uh, Sammy and to Lucas, and we just had the scenes on Wednesday where – you all, your character already knew that Will was was gay, and uh, you're dealing with uh, with with Sammy on her selfish reaction to blaming herself for her son being gay. So that's what happened uh, as of uh, Wednesday. I see. Uh, and uh, uh, what is the general response to those two? They're pretty big pieces of information in terms of the direction. Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Hey, and welcome to the Soap Series. This is Doug with my co-host, Pam. Pam, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. Right when I push the Days of Our Lives uh, theme music, we have our guest that joined us. Welcome, James Scott, to our program. Hello. Hi, James. (laughs) I made it exactly on time. Oh, I love it. I'm glad to be here. (laughs) <laughs> oh, thank you for coming. Lauren, Lauren said that since she was your your on screen stepmommy dearest, that she would make sure that you called on time. Uh, yes, yes. We were working together just a few minutes ago, so I was reminded uh, several times today not to be late, and she reinforced how fantastic the show was and how wonderful all of you were. So I'm very excited. Oh, thank oh, well, you so much. Well, well, thank you so much. We're very honored to have this opportunity with you. Uh, the fans are really what drives our show. We we always ask the, the uh, fans who they want, and uh, we've been looking for a way to get a hold of you. And we had Lauren on a few weeks ago, and she was a wonderful guest. And she said, well, I will talk to, to James and see if he can come on the show. And I said, oh, thank you so much. The fans would love it. You have a lot of people listening in tonight, so your your fans are really excited. Good. Well, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be here. Uh, uh, I, so, I think I mentioned this to you earlier. I have to put until about 6.45, not quite the whole hour, but I, um, unfortunately I have a, I have a, uh, a work dinner that's going to be just four seven. So. Uh, just, oh, that's okay. Uh, we understand. Yeah. No, pro- no problem. So how, how, was, how was your day of filming today? <laughs> 